Coming up, could you soon be taxed for shopping online? And we have a local election update. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Camille Ralston. And I'm Stephen Rubin. An investigation is underway for suspects in a weekend home invasion. Police responded to a call in the 200 block of Windsor Street on Saturday night shortly after 10.30 p.m. It was reported that two men were inside the home when, ident when unidentified burglars with weapons entered the home demanding items from them. The burglars escaped with an estimated $400 in cash, gold jewelry, and both of their cell phones. So far, no arrests have been made, but police are continuing to investigate. Two Florida men were arrested for credit card fraud during a traffic stop on Interstate 75. 35-year-old Francisco Enriquez and 32-year-old Juan Carlos Marrero Vienes were charged by Lowndes County with County deputies with forgery of financial transaction card and possession of tools for the commission of a crime. During the search of the vehicle, officers found 160 credit cards in the driver's names and a credit card skimming device. Both men were transported to Lowndes County Jail. Investigators are working to identify banks and victims whose information has been compromised. New data is available for the governor's race in Georgia. Recent polls have been released showing that incumbent Nathan Deal is now statistically tied with challenger Jason Carter. This is good news for Carter, as Governor Deal has watched a nine-point lead disappear in just three weeks. With early voting starting in two months, both campaigns are intensifying efforts to sway votes. Now, as the November 4th general election nears, citizens are being encouraged to register to vote. News Valdosta reporter Jennifer Dandron tells you how. With the general election coming up this November, the Lowndes County Board of Elections is reminding citizens to register to vote. Registering has never been easier since they have moved to a paperless process. Citizens can now go online or download the Georgia Votes app instead of picking up or mailing in their paperwork. Devontae Battle, an administrative clerk at the Board of Elections, says they have seen an increase in people registering, which can be attributed to the new, easier, and more accessible electronic method. I believe it's just more convenient for the um, people in the community just to download that app than to have to come in here and fill out a paper. As the date of the general election nears, the number of people registering increases. Several organizations in the county are also hosting workshops to help citizens register. Elizabeth Tuttle says she registered through an organization at Valdosta State University because it was simple and she wanted to do her part as a member of society. Um, I think it's very important to register to vote and to vote. I don't think enough young people take it seriously. Um, but I mean, we have the opportunity to do our part. I think it's our civic duty, so I think it's very important. All it takes to register is your Georgia State driver's license. The last day to register is October 6th. Remember, you cannot vote if you have not registered. Be sure to go online or download the app so your voice can be heard this November. For News Valdosta, I'm Jennifer Dandron. The Valdosta Police Department is now taking applications for Citizens Police Academy. Classes start next Thursday, September 25th. The classes will meet on eight consecutive Thursday nights. The course is free and all materials will be provided. Entry into the class is on a first-come basis. For more information, contact VDP Officer Bernotis Williams. Last Thursday night, the Valdosta City Council approved an upgrade the, the local 911 emergency radio system. The system upgrade will cost $6.5 million, which will be financed over three years with zero interest. The costly but beneficial upgrade was requested for the joint Valdosta and Lowndes County Public Safety Communication System. If you're an online shopper, there's a possibility you might have to pay extra in the future. Members of Valdosta's Chamber of Commerce are discussing an internet sales tax. Valdosta City Manager Larry Hansen and local business owner Carla Penny are in favor for taxing those who shop online. Penny says that a number of local businesses are suffering from internet sales. 
They say this tax will give local businesses an equal chance to compete with online stores such as Amazon and other websites. This past week, the city of Valdosta remembered the tragedy of 9-11. A remembrance ceremony was held last Thursday at Valdosta's main fire station. Led by Valdosta Fire Chief Freddie Broom, the ceremony was dedicated to the lives lost on that tragic day. A wreath also was laid on the 9-11 memorial at Lowndes County Courthouse, and the group of Lowndes County citizens who gathered for the observance reflected on that tragic day. When we come back, South Georgia Medical Center announces a new campus administrator. And we have a look at a recent exhibit at the Turner Center for the Arts, so stay with us. This is Howard Chu, music director of your Valdosta Symphony Orchestra. Join us in celebrating the VSO's 25th anniversary with an exciting season featuring world-renowned soloists and South Georgia's own VSO. Experience the power of music live in Valdosta. For more information, call 229-333-2150 or find us at valdostasymphony.org. Welcome back to News Valdosta. A local organization is looking for volunteers to help keep Lowndes County and Valdosta beautiful. The local nonprofit Keep Lowndes Valdosta Beautiful, or KLVB, is offering residents the opportunity to make a difference in their community. KLVB is hosting two events this October. Rivers Alive is scheduled for Saturday, October 4th, while Make a Difference Day is set for Saturday, October 25th. If you are interested in joining their efforts, residents are encouraged to contact the local office so they can be assigned where they are needed most. The Turner Center for the Arts Gallery is always open for the public. The gallery exhibits change every six to eight weeks. Here's Highland Park with more about the current exhibit. Turner Center for the Art opened the gallery until September 17. This gallery was opened on August 4th and closed on September 17th. It's open Tuesday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 10 p.m. to 4 p.m. This gallery is featured by Bruce Babic's South Georgia Regional Library Summer Camp Walk and East Africa Art. It's free and open to the public. That it's free might bring in more people that wouldn't normally go. Um, so it's really nice and it's a cool place to look at. Gallery of Funny Recession for next to will open September 22. As the curator, it's uh, just part of my job to figure out where they uh, fit best in the gallery. It's um, kind of like a big puzzle. Each time these artists deliver their work, they drop them off, and I have to figure out which order they work in and which fits in what space the best. So that's kind of part of my job as a designer and curator. Favorite to come gallery for news by the star, I made in park. The South Georgia Medical Center has appointed Richard Dwozen as the new campus administrator for the SGMC Berrien and Lanier campuses. Dwozen will oversee operations such as strategic direction, physician relations, quality performance, and financial management of the facilities. SGMC CEO Randy Saul says he is confident that the organization will benefit from the vast experience and leadership skills of Dwozen, who comes to South Georgia from Meadows Regional Medical Center in Vidalia, Georgia. Wiregrass Georgia Technical College revealed its list of summer 2014 graduates last Thursday. The summer commencement was held on August 29th at the Grand Theater in Fitzgerald, Georgia. A total of 258 students graduated. Graduates were awarded with either an associate's degree or diploma or technical certificate of credit. Graduates came from counties across the southern end of Georgia, including Lowndes, Tift, and Thomas counties. Thirteen GED graduates were also honored at the ceremony. 
Lowndes High School will be hosting its homecoming celebration on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. near the LHS tennis courts. This year the theme is Mardi Gras. There will be a bonfire, pep rally, numerous carnival games, and dinner. Chick-fil-A, nachos, chili, Little Caesars, and carnival games will be available for purchase. Students and their families are encouraged to come out and support. When we come back, Tichel Williams will give you a look at our upcoming weather. So stay with us. Body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Now let's take a look at the weather with Tichelle Williams. Tichelle, what's the forecast? Thank you, Stephen. Today's weather will be partly sunny with a high reaching near 90 degrees. However, there was also a 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms earlier this afternoon. Tonight's temperature will be mostly cloudy and will drop to a low of 71 degrees, along with a 60% chance of rain and thunderstorms. So watch out for possible flooding if you're driving on the roads tonight. Tomorrow's forecast will also be mostly cloudy with a high of 89 degrees and a low of 69 degrees, along with a 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms, producing heavy rainfall. The UV index reads 10 today, which is high on the 12-point scale. You might want to make sure you protect yourself with the necessary precautions to ensure that you keep your skin healthy and protected if you plan on being outdoors. The pollen count is set to 7.4 today, which is medium to high. So don't forget to take your medicine to keep your allergies under control. And that's it for today's weather. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Tichelle. When we come back, we'll give you the weekend sports update. So don't go away. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is OK. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. All right, listen, we all need a little nudge sometimes. I don't function without coffee in the morning, but it is going to take more than a double mochaccino to help you here. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Danny, no lo puedo hacer. Quiero oír. Danny, lo voy a hacer. DMC, liking your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb. Just keeping it real. <laughs> Look! I'm gonna get my GED. Come on, get your hey, GED. Hey. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Welcome back. Now let's check in with Taylor Williams for our local sports. Taylor? 
But all the state rammed into Winston-Salem without taking a break on Saturday. After talking about wanting to control the ball and the clock to help slow down Winston-Salem State's high-octane offense, the Blazers instead used a fast pace of offense to race out to a first-half lead before holding on for a 22-17 win at McKeetron High Cantrell Stadium in Atlanta. As a team, Frosted State ran for 229 yards on 47 carries following a similar template used in the 2012 Division II Championship where the two teams were opponents. In that game, VSU won 35-7 running for 207 yards. Getting similar production was largely due to playing fast and limiting what the Rams could do defensively. VSU coach David Dean said the fast-paced attack helped the Blazers get into a rhythm, something they struggled to do against Albany State in the September 6th opener. Rockdale County basically dared Lowndes High School to beat it through the air. The Vikings did just that at Martin Stadium on Friday night. Lowndes smashed Rockdale 45-15. Lowndes County tight end Gabe Neighbors hauled in five passes for, four, for 58 yards and two touchdowns during the game. Neighbors entered the game without a catch in Lowndes' first three games. After the Bulldogs, who fell 3-1, took the opening kickoff and drove straight down the field for a 7-0 lead, Lowndes marched right back. On a third and 10 from the Bulldogs' 25, Neighbors hauled in a 13-yard pass. This Friday, we'll see more of him when Newton visits for the Vikings homecoming at Martin Stadium. Valwood hit Frederica with a whomping 47 victory on Friday night. Frederica Academy jumped in front of the Parker Bonner Pass with 7 minutes 14 seconds in the first quarter, taking it all the way to the house to give the Knights an early lead. Valwood hadn't played well in its previous two away games from Goddard Field, but the Valance wouldn't let that happen again. Bonner's five-yard touchdown run early in the second quarter tied the game at seven. Bonner followed up his touchdown run by following Jack Helms on a 31-yard touchdown to go up 14-17. Bonner redeemed his first half mistakes by quickly giving Valwood a 28-7 lead in the third quarter. The Valance defense shut down the night in the second half with a fourth quarter interception capping Valwood's three interception performance, bringing them to a strongly desired win. The Varosta Wildcats' impressive 2014 campaign continued Friday night at Baysmore Hyder Stadium at the Cats again used a stout defensive performance to shut out the Thomasville Bulldogs, 10-0 in a game that saw a near hour-long lightning delay. Friday's contest between the Cats and the Dogs, the team's first meeting since 1985, was undoubtedly sloppy, but that didn't stop Varosta from moving to a 4-0 on the season. The Wildcats have now surrendered just 10 points in four games, a stretch that has seen Rance Gillespie's squad outscore opponents by a whopping 80 points. The heavily favored Cats didn't look such through three quarters against the Bulldogs, however, as a stout Thomasville defensive front kept the Dogs' hopes for an up upset bid alive. The Georgia Christian Generals got a chance to see how they'll measure up to a similar football program on Friday night. Let's just say they came, they saw, and they conquered. The Generals easily took home the win at Hinesville, beating First Presbyterian Christian 55-12. After just the first quarter, Georgia Christian led with an impressive 34-6. Next week, they will be taking a break before continuing their season away on the 26th against Robert F. Monroe. Thanks for tuning in to sports. I'm Taylor. Back to you all at the desk. Thanks, Taylor. When we come back, we'll tell you how one local business is paying homage to the past. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Valdosta State University. Quality academics. Caring faculty mentors. A beautiful campus. 
opportunities for involvement, leadership, and service. Championship athletics, spirit and pride. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The Turner Center for the Arts is preparing for the opening of a new exhibit next week. The new gallery is set to run from September 22nd until October 29th. The gallery will feature local prominent artists such as Al Park, Harold Greiner, Swanee Pencil Pushers, and the Southern Artist League. The opening reception is set for next Monday, September 22nd from 5 to 7 p.m. It's free and open to the public. If you've driven through downtown Valdosta lately, you may have noticed the addition of a huge billboard painted on the side of a local family business. The owners of Miller Hardware on East Hill Avenue recently hired an artist from Opelika, Alabama to recreate a painted billboard on the side of their building. The billboard contains their business logo and website and is a throwback to the days when many businesses downtown advertised by painting signs directly to brick. However, many of the old signs have faded, chipped, or been demolished along with the old buildings. Miller Hardware has been in operation since 1908 and has been its current location since 1948. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Stephen Rubin. And I'm Camille Ralston. We'll see you again tomorrow.